On today's episode, excessive complexity is killing the auto industry. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. I recently presented a live cast webinar on the outlook for the automotive industry in 2026 and beyond. And in the process of researching the subject, several interesting and I think some would say shocking insights emerged. Many of those insights are actually economic more than technical. As wealth disparity continues to widen, today in the United States, the top 20% of income earners account for fully 50% of consumer goods spending, while the bottom third has little disposable income and certainly none for new cars or light trucks. The political and social impact of this phenomenon is not really relevant to the automotive engineer, but there's no question that bottom line pressures are driving many automakers up market. And the one thing that well-heeled consumers want from motor vehicles is increasing sophistication. And the engineering community is delivering that sophistication, mainly because of the shift from electromechanical hardware to software-defined systems. It used to be that a power window was simply an SPDT switch on the door, sending control currents to relays which powered an electric motor. Today, that switch sends a command to a body control module where an algorithm analyzes the meaning of the input, then commands that same relay to pull in. The difference is the ability of that simple switch to command different things. One touch up or down is a famous example, and from a safety perspective, it's now possible to have window glass that senses an obstacle, like a child's head, and prevents the kind of tragic accidents that used to happen decades ago. Now, all that's good, but multiply the complexity of the electric window lift by several thousand times all around the body and chassis, and you end up with dozens or hundreds of processors running through staggering amounts of code. The vehicle of 1995 used perhaps 300,000 lines of code overall, and today that number can easily exceed 150 million. Think about that. 100 plus million lines of code. For a standard platform development time of perhaps three or four years, you would need hundreds of dedicated coders to generate the thousands of lines of code per person to make this work. Sometimes it doesn't work, and we're in a world now where very imperfect software is continually patched, either through firmware updates during scheduled maintenance at the dealer, and increasingly over the air through the cloud. So what, you might say? While well, the plot thickens as ever faster processors can manage ever more code with minimal latency, encouraging the engineering community to add still more complexity. The more code, the more errors, naturally, but with the ability to send updates over the air, it makes it possible to write imperfect code and still get the vehicle to production, then patch as you go. Now, my skin crawls at the thought of intentionally releasing things into the market that an engineer knows are substandard, let alone defective, but in software, it goes on all the time. Now, this is unnoticed to most owners, but the situation is very different if you're a trucker broken down on the side of the road or a farmer with a dead combine at harvest time. The closed proprietary nature of software is a serious problem, and the so-called right to repair movement is increasingly active to combat this. But even if systems are entirely open, it's unclear how an end user can wade through the algorithms that are that complex to find the fault, then correct them at the code level without causing chaos in the system. I suspect it will be impossible. So what's going to happen? Well, I expect the repair aftermarket will simply apply AI to the problem, hack the systems, then have ChatGPT or something similar review the code, run simulations, and suggest fixes or improvements. Sound good? Well, maybe, but the surprising lack of user-friendliness in most modern automobiles suggests that complexity for its own sake generates less than optimal consumer satisfaction. There's a lot going on in the automotive industry right now. Complexity and affordability are just two of the issues I discussed in the webinar, and if you didn't have a chance to see it live, you can download it by clicking on the link in the description below. Take a look and let me know what you think. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.